Hey folks and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to be taking a look at the Division 1 and seeing if it's worth playing in 2021. Everything from the content, the visuals, all the way to the current player base. Let's jump into it. I thought this would be a video worth making because I've had a lot of people I play The Division 2 with lately asking about the first game and whether or not it's worth trying or giving a go. And it got me thinking there must be a lot of players who actually started with the second game and who may have never even touched the first Division game. So in this one I'm going to do a review of The Division 1, breaking it down into the story, visuals, gameplay, content and the current state of the player base and the support for the game. And at the end, I'll run down a list of current pros and cons of playing The Division 1 in 2021. The idea of this video isn't to give you a yes or no to should you play it, but give you all the information you need to make up your own mind whether you think The Division 1 is something that you'll enjoy jumping into in 2021, but I will give you a few of my own opinions about the game towards the end. Tom Clancy's The Division is a multiplayer third-person looter shooter, a genre that combines RPG elements like character progression, loot and attributes with more traditional shooting gameplay, developed by Massive Entertainment and published by Ubisoft in March 2016 on PC, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The game also received a variety of post-launch content, both free and paid for, that added new PvE and PvP game modes, and an extension to the Dark Zone and even a new area to the map. In Tom Clancy's The Division, a virus is released on Black Friday in New York City, known as the Dollar Flu, a genetically modified strain of smallpox. Using infected banknotes as a way to spread it quickly amongst the Black Friday shoppers. You play as an agent of the Strategic Homeland Division, or SHD for short. A highly trained sleeper agent living a civilian life, and only activated as a last line of defence when everything else has failed. After the spread of the virus causes a collapse of civilization in New York, you're activated in Brooklyn as part of the second wave of Division agents after the first wave goes dark. After securing Brooklyn, you're quickly dispatched to New York to help secure a base of operations and bring stability back to the city. One thing you'll quickly notice playing through the Division 1 is that it isn't necessarily the story of your agent, but the story of the city and the people who've had to live and struggle through the chaos. This is done through a huge range of collectibles that follow various characters you never meet and their journey through the city. These range from a series of audio files telling stories in parts, echoes that show you a snapshot of past events, crashed drone black boxes and more. All of these different stories bring together and show how serious the events caused by the pandemic really are and just how many lives have been affected, making the story feel a lot bigger than just the part you play giving the world of The Division a truly immersive feel. Talking about immersion, the game pulls off New York City in deep winter perfectly, with the entire map being covered in snow, the streets littered with abandoned cars and debris, but yet it's so quiet. You can almost feel the chaos that occurred during the outbreak of the dollar flu, but now there's nothing more than looters and scavenging civilians trying to survive. The design of the map does a great job of telling you the story of the city that you've arrived in. As you travel around the map, you'll see residential areas that look ransacked, as if families were trying to pack up and get out as fast as possible. Shopping districts with holiday decorations still up, ready for the holiday sales, and even piles of bodies in the North Dark Zone, where people were dying quicker than they could be buried. The lighting and weather effects also play a big part in the overall atmosphere of the game, with light breaking through the huge skyscrapers as the sun rises and sets, and the weather changing from a calm sunny day with beams of light cutting through the fog, to a thick snowstorm with ferocious winds that make it difficult to see what's ahead of you. The map is incredibly atmospheric, and to me, one of the best parts of the game. With the division being a looter shooter, the loot aspect of the gameplay relies on gathering loot like most RPG style games, which in the division 
is six gear slots. Your chest, mask, knees, backpack, gloves and holster, and your weapons which range from assault rifles, sniper rifles, shotguns, SMGs and pistols. All together increasing your character's overall power and increasing their stats and attributes as you progress through the game. There's also various talent you unlock as you level your character. The shooting side of it, the Division is a solid, cover-based third-person shooter with great gunplay that feels different with each class of weapon. You'll also gain access to a range of different skills that can be used by a Division agent. You have access to two skill slots, you can equip two at a time, and these range from portable turrets, a pulse that can scan the area for hostiles, a seeker mine that'll roll out to the nearest enemy before detonating, and many more. Plus, each of these skills also has a range of unlockable variations that you unlock as you upgrade the base of operations. If customization is more your thing, the Division only has a few presets for you to choose from when creating your character, from the face, hair, skin colour, and a few accessories and markings. But there is a huge range of different clothing in a range of different colours for the eight different appearance slots you get for your character. These are the hat, pants, shirt, jacket, patch, scarf, shoes, and masks which you can unlock by completing specific commendations. You can find a lot of the game's apparel in the open world by looting or picking up off NPCs. And there's also an in-game appearance vendor where you can buy cosmetics for in-game currency. Or you can pick up special cosmetics at the premium vendor by using premium currency or by earning encrypted keys by playing through the game. Next, let's talk about the content available in-game. First, I would highly recommend picking up the Season Pass. With the age of the game, it's often super cheap, and it brings some of the best elements to the game, including two of the best PvE game modes, and the best PvP mode, in my opinion. The game itself comes with a large open world map, and a story campaign that takes place across 15 main missions, in different landmarks around New York City. These also have different difficulties you can select, for better loot or more of a challenge. There's also a ton of different side missions and activities scattered around the open world map. If you're a completionist, or just want to know more about the world of The Division, there's a load of different collectibles that will lead you around the city, telling stories of the people of New York and other Division agents trying to survive the anarchy. Once you clear the campaign, there's bounties in the shape of HVTs, or high value targets to hunt down, legendary missions which add a whole new layer of difficulty to the game, the West Side Piers, which is a new dynamic area added to the Division map, with constantly changing objectives. And there's the Resistance game mode that was added with it, which plays out more like a Horde mode with its own three maps. There's also two incursions, Clear Sky and Vulcan Lost. These are like small four-player raids that have the players take on unique challenges and mechanics. There is another two incursions, Dragon's Nest and Stolen Signal. But these two came later on as part of the two DLC packs that are included with the Season Pass I mentioned earlier. For PvP, there's also Skirmish, which is a 4v4 deathmatch mode, and the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone is a large lawless area in the centre of the map with PvE landmarks that you can go in and farm for loot, then extract the loot at an extraction point. But in the Dark Zone, players can also go rogue, killing other players and stealing their loot to extract it for themselves. Whether you're a PvE player or a PvP player, the Dark Zone is an amazing area to play in and one of the highlights of The Division 1, something that just hasn't been the same in the sequel of Division 2. There was also three major post-launch paid content drops for The Division in Year 1. Expansion 1, Underground, which added the Dragon's Nest incursion and the Underground game mode to the game. That added a ton of replayability in the form of procedurally generated series of underground tunnels through the subway and sewers of New York City, with different objectives and enemy types each time you play. These could also be customised, letting you change the length of the mission and the directives, which were modifiers that changed the mechanics of how you played the game for a more unique experience. The second expansion, Expansion 2, was Survival. Like Underground, Survival added a whole new game mode that really shook up the gameplay for a very unique experience and completely different way to play the game. Survival has you surviving a helicopter crash in New York City during a savage snowstorm. 
You're injured and need to get to safety before you become septic, something that you can slow down by finding medicine. You have none of your previous gear or weapons, so you'll have to head out into the harsh weather to gear up and find what you need to survive. On top of this, you also need to stay warm by finding clothing and staying near to fire or heat wherever possible to stop yourself being damaged by hypothermia. The goal is to find antivirals that you were transporting, head into the dark zone in the center of the map, and call for an extraction to escape. But this is also the first time in the Division franchise you'll meet a hunter. Under Geared, you'd have to kill the hunter and wait for the helicopter to escape. As you play through survival, there's caches dotted around the map that you can find and extract with you, and these are given over to your main character as rewards for getting out safely. Each round of survival takes place in its own instance of the entire New York map, with up to 24 players, and can also be played in two different ways. PvE, where you're still with other players but you can't harm each other, or PvP, where it's everyone for themselves. Later in the game's life, hunters were also added to the underground game mode as an additional threat. And the third expansion, Expansion 3, was Last Stand which added the stolen signal incursion, which was the best incursion by far, and the Last Stand PvP game mode. Last Stand is a 12 versus 12 PvP game mode, which has each team fight over areas of the New York map to take and hold control points to earn points. The first team to reach the amount of points needed wins. Simple, but really good fun. So there is currently plenty to do in-game, but like I said, I would highly recommend picking up the Season Pass if you're thinking of giving The Division 1 a try. It adds way more than its value to the game, especially if you pick it up on offer for a really good price. But we've spoken about the content in the game, but what about the player base? It's all good and well having plenty to do, but what about people to play it with? Obviously, with the second game being out and entering its third year, most players migrated over to The Division 2 from the first game. But with The Division 2 having a lack of support for the PvP community, a good amount of PvP players actually moved back to the first game for the Dark Zone and PvP game modes. On PC, I've jumped in a few times, and I'm always surprised at how active the Dark Zone region of the map is, and usually how many players are hanging around the social areas. I wouldn't expect matchmaking to be instant, but it's not as quiet as you'd think for a game that's nearly over five years old. Unlike with the player base, when it comes down to the current support for The Division 1, there pretty much isn't any. With the release of The Division 2, pretty much all attention was shifted from the first game to the second, as you'd expect. But what they have done is set the global events on a rotation. Global events being events that add in-game modifiers that can earn you extra rewards and switch up the gameplay. This gives the game a few rotating events that can switch things up every so often, but other than that, there won't really be any new content, maybe a few minor patches, but I imagine that's it. In conclusion, The Division 1 is a great game to play through, with an atmospheric map and setting, solid third-person shooting mechanics, and a deep lore to dig into. But, with the second game being out, the player base is on the low side, and because of its age, there's very little to no support. If you've started with the second game, and enjoy the story, lore and gameplay, or if you're a primarily solo player, I would highly recommend picking up The Division 1 with the Season Pass. Both the game and the Season Pass are very often on offer for pretty cheap, and if you pick them up on offer, I'd consider it money well spent. But, if you want to play the game for the player base and the group content, I think you'd be better off taking a look at the much newer Division 2. I've actually put together a much more up-to-date Should You Play video for Tom Clancy's The Division 2 earlier this year, which is nearly 100,000 views, which is crazy. And I'll pop the link for that up in the top right here. And that's everything for this video. I hope you've got enough information from this video to decide whether or not The Division 1 is a good pickup for yourself. And if you've watched this video all the way to the end, I just wanted to say thank you for all the support. This channel's been doing unbelievably well lately, and I owe it all to your support, so thank you. I've really enjoyed this video and breaking the game down, and I was playing with the idea of doing more of these Should You Play videos, looking at other games in the looter shooter genre. So if there's ever a lull in Division 2 content, you might find something worth giving a go while you're waiting. If you think that's something you'd be interested in, please let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Division-related content. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.